Welcome back. In this video, we'll be doing a very quick analysis of the difference between the sounds of English and the sounds of Irish. The majority of people who learn Irish, of course, have English as their first language. And they assume that because they're from Ireland, that their accents are the sounds of Irish, as was spoken before Irish died out. That's not true. Uh, nowadays there's very very little substrate influence from the Irish language on English, especially in cities and especially amongst younger people um, who are better at learning Irish than the older people. Uh, there seems to be a new generation of Irish speakers, Irish learners uh, coming up but are perhaps unaware of how little uh, Irish influence there is on their English. Um, so I'm going to fly through this uh, quite a lot of uh, complicated material, so I'm going to shut up and just start. Right, so in my last video, um, I spoke about uh, labial consonants, so consonants that are made with the lips. In Irish, all the labial consonants, so uh, p, b, m, what's uh, 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 phoneme, the concept of a sound, the phoneme is the concept of a sound, um, are all, what, they're all pronounced as um, bilabial consonants. So I've arranged these into, uh, let's start at the bottom, voiceless, um, so I'll explain voiceless. If you say English there's no vibration in your throat, but if you say um, there is vibration. So basically voiceless means um, well, that the, the glottis, the vocal folds, are wide apart, that there's, there's no vibration, and voiced means that the, the uh, glottis of the vocal folds are opening and closing cyclically, and this produces this vibration. Um, an obstruent, of course, is related to the word obstruct, meaning that you're blocking the air somehow, um, whether wholly, completely, as in p -t -k, um, or whether you're blocking it just by which, enough to cause friction. So, uh, like English, uh, well, that's it for the, well, uh, we'll come back. And then we've nasals, which means that the, the, the velum, or the back of the tongue, is, or sorry, the velum is lowered to allow, allow air up through uh, the nose. Um, so, for example, when you say, mm, as an, an M, mm, the air isn't coming out your mouth, uh, it's coming out your nose. Uh, now. So, as I said, there are two P's in Irish. It's, in English, there's only one P. So, of course, uh, people who have English as their first language and are learning Irish assume, as anyone would, they use the sounds of their first language, um, unless they've studied phonetics. Um, so, an English speaker is going to ignore the Irish P and P. So, the Irish P has rounded lips. And it's followed by a puff of air. I won't go into details now. Real and um, and the slender uh, p, um, where the lips are retracted. I don't know if there. In English, the lips, as I said in my last video, are in the middle. Um, English is kind of mediocre. <laughs> uh, the sounds are neither very far forward or very far back. So. Uh, um, Let's start at the back with Irish slender P, English, and broad Irish. So, and you can hear, of course, that the pitch is is um, lowering as well. It's getting deeper. Um, so slender P, or well, slender consonants are usually, um, well, almost by definition, uh, are higher pitched. English again, it's going it's a bit further forward. So the the the, um, the resonating air body uh, is larger, and of course the larger the the body of air in which, or in which the air is vibrating, the deeper the sound. This is why a double bass um, can play deeper than a flute, for example, um, because the flute is shorter. Um, so anyway, sorry, I digress, as I tend to do, um, but as you know. Um, so, you can hear the difference, I hope. 
Um, no. Every consonant in Irish, except in G and H, which is kind of a, a meta consonant, um, can be softened uh, in Irish. Basically, it's, uh, there's less constriction. Consonant, of course, the word con, the root con, means together, and consonant to sound together. Uh, basically, if there's no con, uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, constriction, constriction, um, or there's no contact between different parts of the mouth, what are called articulators, uh, then there's no consonant. So what usually happens uh, in shavu or softening uh, is that there's the, the, the softened version of the consonant uh, usually has less constriction or less contact between the articulators, the parts of the mouth that, that are, are producing the sound. Uh, right, so P, uh, PH has the same sound in Irish as F. F is an independent letter. Uh, it goes back to Proto-Celtic uh, W. We'll talk about that another time. Um, so PH and F, uh, when it's broad, again, uh, the lips are uh, protruded, so and when it's slender, the lips are retracted. Um, but of course, in Irish, as I said, all these labial consonants are bilabial. They, they use both the lips, whereas uh, in English, F uh, is labiodental, which means that the lower lip is raised to the upper teeth, as opposed to the other way around. Um, for most speakers, presumably. Um, right, so that's straight away you can see the difference between English and Irish. English, Irish, but the English speaker is prone to hear both these as an nearest sound in English. Uh, and what's interesting is that I'll tell a little story. Um, the English W, oh sorry, and I should say that um, FH when it's silent uh, completely loses contact. Uh, I'll talk about that another time. So it's, it's FH is silent in Irish. The English WH, uh, what? No, there's two ways to write it. Uh, there's this way that I prefer, and there's also the upside down. Here we go. Uh, oh, that looks like an input. It's an upside down W. You'd have to take my word for it. Uh, or you shouldn't take anyone's word for anything, really. Um, no, this sound has been lost in a lot of English dialects. So a lot of people nowadays wouldn't have a difference between uh, which, 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 which. No, there's a difference in my in my accent, which, which. Um, there's someone on YouTube, and I won't say who, um, tries to maintain, obviously it doesn't have the sound in this person's um, uh, native speech, let's say. Um, and pronounces it as so that the comes first and then the what but that's not it's there's the unvoicing and then it becomes voiced that's not the sound there's a difference between for example uh, why and why where the the voicing starts immediately with the thing anyway that's English phonetics we don't, we don't get into that but this sound is foreign to Irish. So in the same way that people whose first language is English nowadays and are learning a foreign language, Irish, uh, foreign coming from the Latin outside, meaning outside your experience, uh, well it's not what foreign means but of course we can imagine it to be outside one's experience. Um, what was I saying? Yes, so this sound was foreign to, is foreign to Irish, but the nearest sound, this voiceless, um, bilabial, velarized uh, approximant, uh, has the nearest sound in Irish is whew. So, for example, I have relatives who pronounce WH as, um, well, instead of using the English, they say, whew. so instead of what, where, and why, they'll say what, where, and why, uh, what, where, and why. Um, now, that whew, um, this bilabial, voiceless bilabial fricative is likely to be heard by English speakers as an F. So you'll often see people when they're imitating people who, uh, or when they're trying to uh, represent the speech of people who uh, say what, where, and why, um, they'll use an F 
But of course, F in English again is, is labiodental, which is a different sound from the white, fire, and fi, which doesn't use the teeth at all. Um, and the important thing to remember, as I said, is that F in Irish, uh, unless it's in borrowed words, um, at the start of a word, uh, actually comes from uh, Proto Celtic wo, which, like in English, is a doesn't use the teeth. Wo. So I'll come back to that another time. Flying through this onto the voice. So uh, you have we have this thing in Irish. I'm sure people in Ireland already know this. Um, uh, oru or uh, eclipse, basically, where um, a better term would be nasalization, um, and basically it's where a consonant becomes more like an n. Uh, so N has two relevant qualities uh, in Oru. Uh, it's voiced uh, and it's nasal, meaning that there's air coming through. Um, and usually uh, what happens to the voiceless consonants is that they become voiced. And if the consonant is already voiced, they'll become nasalized. Uh, we'll talk about that in a while. Um, sorry, no, I'm flying through this now, which is a good thing. Shut me up. Stop me going on numbers. Um, right, so Irish B. Again, like every letter in Irish, except H, um, it has a broad and a slender uh, pronunciation uh, that are considered by English speakers to be just one sound. But you're wrong. Uh, so, again, B, 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 with the lips protruded, and B, 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 uh, with the lips retracted. Um, again, I can, I can, let's go from, from uh, back to front. Um, uh, what we'll see. B, 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 B. And again, you can hear the, the pitch uh, decreasing. So English is in the middle. Um, and I told you the story about my one of my grand aunts, um, who says, uh, instead of baby, 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 says baby, 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 with the baby, 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 baby. Um, again, now that's a substrate influence from Irish. Substrate meaning uh, stratum is a layer sub under, so the layer under which another language was imposed. English was imposed on top of Irish. Um, Anyway, so B, B, H at the start of a word. Uh, I should mention as well that I'm talking really about these consonants as they're pronounced in the start of the words. Uh, at the start of words, uh, things become a bit more complicated when they're in the middle, depending on whether they're between two short vowels, before a long vowel. We'll talk about it again. Don't worry. Um, B, H, uh, bilabial. So no teeth, just the lips. And the lips are protruded. And V. Um, but of course, there are, there are no um, bilabial fricatives in uh, at least standard or common uh, English dialects. Uh, so what the uh, first uh, the person who has uh, English as a first language um, and others is likely to uh, well is likely to turn this into uh, so uh, you can shade that in. Um, now, people, I well, I wanted to talk about some. Um, Dialectal features as well. Uh, in Connacht and uh, Leinster, and this includes Meath and Loud, which were historically, well, I won't say that they, if they were Ulster dialects because they were all part of the one dialect, whatever you label it. Um, but this w sound has lost its frication um, so that the, the articulators are slightly further apart uh, and that's turned into w. So but I'd say, uh, mavo, mavo, my cow, mavo, um, uh, Ulster, and uh, Meath, Louth, and East Ulster. Uh, mavo, mavo, actually, sorry, the vowel was lower, yeah, um, yeah but more, more open. Uh, mavo, mavo. Um, although in Rath Oath, for people who are interested in dialects, um, both sounds were used for O Fada. Uh, so you had the more southern O, uh, where the lips are more closed, O. And you had the more typically northern uh, aw, where the lips are more open. Oh, aw, aw. Um, again, I'll talk about that another time. Right, flying on. So when we um, eclipse uh, B, it becomes M. Uh, M, again, two versions, mo and uh, m. Sorry, I should do that in front of the camera. Mm, uh, m. Whereas English speakers are likely to ignore the difference in Irish, m, m, and neutralize it in the middle, m. Meteor. Um, now, this is an interesting sound. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Uh, MH, uh, formerly written as dust, that would be dust. 
uh, yeah, I'll go back to talk about the, the, the okay, we have some time. Now, so in the same way that uh, B is a voiced um, fricative, uh, MH, now there's some debate uh, amongst Irish scholars um, about the pronunciation of MH in Old Irish or Old uh, Gaelic, Old Gaidelic, Old Gaidelsh. Take your pick. Um, although there were recordings of uh, speakers from uh, County Sligo and it would seem that this was the very sound. So it was like this, v, this bilabial V, no teeth. Um, and because M is nasal, uh, MH retained this nasal quality. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, this is an awkward way, right? Well, it's not an awkward way, but it's, it's uh, involves uh, knowing a certain amount about the international phonetic alphabet. So a bilabial fricative, uh, protruded lips and the back of the tongue raised, uh, and now this squiggly thing um, implies nasality, so that there's some air coming through the nose. Uh, mm. uh, another way to think about uh, MH, of course, um, and I, I've never, yeah, um, I've never heard it explained this way. But so spread the word. I think this is a good way to explain it. Uh, again, simply what a chevu is is you're reducing the con the the constriction or the contact between uh, articulators, parts of the mouth. Um, so try to say ama 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 ama. Of course, the lips touch ama ama ama. Now try to say that without the lips touching ama ama. Well, and they touched their nose, didn't they? Ama ama ama. Um, I don't think of it as a W. Try to still think of it as an M. Now I should say that this sound is extremely rare in the world's languages. Is it, about, is it um, found in Tlingit or Tlingit? As people often say in English, um, Native American language. Uh, now it's found in other languages as well, but it is a very rare sound. Um, this note, I've never encountered any teacher that, um, aren't they lucky, um, that <laughs> has taught, or perhaps has even known, about the difference between BH and MH. Uh, traditionally, MH uh, was nasal, of course, there's dialectical difference nowadays. Right, let's fly on. Uh, but again, of course, this, ra this rare uh, uh, sound, like Mouvard, uh, love. Um, uh, it's interesting in in, in Kerry, for example, um, L A father M H A. What I'm sure a lot of school learners would say, lava, lava, um, is pronounced in Kerry, law, law, with a nasal vowel where the M H A disappears, uh, but leaves the nasality, uh, law, law, which is different certainly for the older, less anglicised speakers. Uh, is different from law, law, which is a day. So law is a day, but law with a nasal vowel is hands. Um, Jesus, let him fly through this. It's a good thing because it stops me to go on, on rambles. Um, just one point that um, there was a difference uh, in Ulster dialects, and again I include uh, Meath and Loud, uh, between a G A B H A R. Can I rub that out a bit? Um, G-A-B-H-A-R, which uh, is pronounced as, uh, uh, sorry, it's going to the top off, uh, uh, gore, where the A-B-H vowel has become O, drop out, gore, but where the A-M-H, A, -M -H -A uh, uh, gown, um, uh, calf, lay, has, has become a um, uh, nasal, uh, fricative, okay, we won't get into the details at the end, but so there's a difference between now, for example, for most people, um, and I mean native speakers, that's probably the same, ow, ow, but this the, traditionally there was a difference, the nasality caused the vowel to become something different, so ow, um, gown, but uh, gore, gore, right, flying on, uh, now onto the coronal consonants, consonants that use the front of the tongue, uh, Corona means the crown, the crown, the front of the tongue, the top of the double. Um, so, starting with S, which uh, was traditionally called Bounderin, Bounderin the Gunson, the, the queen of consonants. Um, again, uh, every letter has a broad and slender version in Irish. So, slender S is sh, with sh, with the lips retracted, um, and is what you would call um, alveolar palatal. 
uh, which means that the body of the tongue is raised to the middle of the mouth, uh, or sorry, raised to the uh, heart palate, the heart part of the roof of the mouth. Um, sh, which is different from English. Uh, sorry, what did I do here? Oh yes, so this sh, sorry, that should refer to the negative. So English speakers like to just say sh, 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 um, but that's not quite the sound. Uh, there are two ways of writing this. Sometimes, if uh, you'll see in um, books describing Irish dialectology, they leave out the palatal sign. Mm, that's a bad idea, I think, um, because then it ends up being pronounced as a, a, a palatal alveolar consonant, sh, sh, as opposed to an alveolar palatal. Sh. So, for example, in Polish, there's a difference between sh and sh. Um, so you have to have to know the difference, and you can hear the difference. Um, was there a point I was going to make about that? Oh yeah, of course, there are some speakers, especially in Kerry nowadays, actually, that uh, instead of having ch, they do turn it into the more uh, English sh, because of the English influence. Uh, then, Irish, when it's broad, so this is slender, this is broad. Uh, now I should explain this. Um, this sign in the, in the uh, IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't see that. Uh, it's too high. It's like a little bridge, uh, and that refers to a dental consonant. Um, I have fierce problems with the International Phonetic Alphabet. Uh, it, it's, it's, well, I'll talk about it another time. Um, so I've slightly adapted it uh, for the purposes of Irish. This square, again, is an International Phonetic Alphabet symbol, uh, and it means an apical or a, um, a laminal consonant. Um, but a laminal meaning the blade of the tongue, the part behind the tip. Uh, so you can hear the difference between Irish, again, where the back of the tongue is raised, and that's what this uh, wo, it's not, no, it's not a W, um, it's like oo, but the lips are, are retracted. So, uh, uh, and this is actually the sound of a o. Uh, or the older sound and it still was used by the last speakers in East Ulster and by some speakers in Donegal and it probably, well not in Meath actually as far as I know but I need to do more study, don't be all. Um, anyway, so that's that sound. Uh, so s, s in Irish, um, whereas it tends to go s in English. So I've now I've concocted this dot symbol to show that it's at the tip of the tongue, uh, the international phonetic alphabet becomes a bit hazy on these details but they're important for Irish so um, of course we should always break rules and conventions when they don't serve our purposes. Um, so it's, and I've drawn this line um, to show that uh, this is the alveolar ridge. Now I've drawn it above the consonant. Oh sorry you can't even see that can you? Um, well okay there's a bit of a glare. Uh, uh, so the dot I'm symbolizing for the tip of the tongue against the alveolar ridge, the normal, well, if you're a native English speaker, you know where it is if you say s or t, or any of these consonants, s, t, d. Um, whereas in Irish, it's a bit further forward, uh, s, s. So, for example, the Irish word um, in, in Kerry, sui, s-u-i, father, which used to be spelt s-u-i-d-h-e, uh, and it should be the word, uh, it should still be spelt, because uh, other dialects still preserve this uh, D-H-E as Y, S Y, S Y, um, uh, Ulster, uh, well, all of Ulster, actually. Um, my whole point is that C, S-U-I, father, as bastardized in the Caidama of uh, is not the same as English C, 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 C. Again, the Irish consonant is deeper because the tongue is... Um, the back of the tongue is is raised to the velum, so the the soft palate or the soft part of the roof of the mouth at the back. Uh, flying on sh is h, uh, nothing too complicated there. Right, uh, same story. Slender t um, tends to be, and well, the broad one is uh, uh, both these sounds in Irish tend to become. In English. So again, let's start with the 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 English in the middle. 
so you can you can hear that they're different. Um, it's only a matter of learning that they're different. Um, now, th when it's slenderized, interesting story, um, became well originally up until probably uh, twelve hundred or thirteen hundred. Um, uh, when slender and when broad with the tip of the tongue. Um, a lot of old Irish scholars would just assume that it was an interdental fricative. Uh, I would argue that it wasn't um, because all the weak or all this, the softened corneal consonants um, are all um, alveolar. So it would stand to reason that uh, the, the older sounds of th and dh or t shave and d shave um, were also alveolar and with the tip of the tongue. Um, nowadays, th at the start of a word has become p. Um, in uh, South Leinster, people would be interested to know, and in Waterford, um, uh, East, well, parts of Clare, East Clare, uh, East Limerick, uh, Tipperary, uh, th at the end of a monosyllabic word became p. So, uh, wheel, uh, broch, broch, or colour, dach, dach. Um, where this sound, oh, well, I won't come to it, okay, sorry, I'll go back. Uh, again, uh, ye, 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 where the middle of the tongue is raised, uh, if it's a pure palatal consonant, then that means that, um, a pure palatal consonant means that the tip of the tongue is actually touching the front of the lower teeth. Uh, ye, 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 ye. So it, it couldn't at all be English, d, 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 which I've symbolized again with the dot symbolizing the tip of the tongue, and the line above it symbolizing the, the gum ridge, the alveolar ridge, where the teeth come out of. D -d -d -d. If you're an English speaker, that's where you pronounce your D, probably. Uh, d -d -d -d. So Irish D, which tends to become uh, uh, not pure palatal, but uh, palatal alveolar or alveolar palatal um, amongst different speakers. Um, and then do do do. So uh, Irish slender D, 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 uh, this softened again to y, y, uh, but disappeared um, again around 1200, 1300. And um, uh, again, uh, tip the tongue. Uh, uh, but, so basically, dh at the start of a word nowadays has is equivalent to gh. We'll discuss that in a minute. Um, now, onto these very complicated consonants. Um, people think that um, n. L and R can't be softened, uh, and that's because the current system of spelling Irish and, um, well, there were certain uh, conventions in Old Irish to show it, but in in uh, the current spelling system of Irish, there is no um, way of showing the the change between these strong consonants and their weak forms. I will be talking about my own recommendations for a radical. Uh, change of uh, radical improvement uh, of Irish spelling that would allow um, these differences to be shown because they're still relevant for uh, Connacht and Ulster and probably for um, were probably used in uh, the traditional or Leinster. Now remembering that Leinster dialects were made up of three different parts: you had Ossery, which is uh, Kilkenny and uh, West Leash, uh, Queens County. Um, then you'd uh, Wexford. Uh, Wicklow, Kildare, South Dublin, uh, North Dublin, uh, North of the Liffey, uh, was more or less uh, the same dialect as Meath. You'll be interested to know. Right, flying on. So uh, take my word for it at the moment anyway. Uh, and I should say that this is a kind of a theoretical um, a theoretical uh, representation of the sounds of Irish. No dialect has preserved all these sounds, um, but it's a good basis to work from. And I would argue it's the only basis to work from. Um, right. So strong n when slender ny, ny, ny. Uh, the the tip of the tongue should be touching the lower teeth uh, and it's like it's like the position of y of, of y in English y um, but that there's ny, ny. so um, and I should say uh, in the middle of the words this strong n is written as double n uh, in most of Munster excluding Kerry and kind of a line from Clonakilty to um, Kilgarvan and West Clare. Um, this NN has become always, uh, um, well, weekend, whereas in the rest of Munster, and it would seem uh, in Leinster, including Kilkenny and um, Leash, and all the way up to the uh, South Dublin, uh, Wicklow, 
um, parts uh, for the South Kildare um, became NG, Ny, so which stands to reason. I don't have time to go into the exact phonetic details, but really there's only a tiny shift from Ny, Ny, Ny to Ny, 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 if you can even hear the difference. Um, so then uh, broaden mu 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 uh, again. So with the tongue against uh, the teeth mu mu mu, or where the teeth come out of the alveolar ridge, or where they meet the alveolar ridge mu and mu. Uh, when softened uh, ni ni ni, so uh, quite similar to the English n, except that the tongue is uh, slightly raised to the hard palate. Uh, this is what this uh, superscript J represents, that it's the tongue is uh, in the position of Y. Um, not worth trying to get into the, the, the faults and the, or, or it's, what do I say, things lacking from the International Phonetic Alphabet. Uh, and the broad N is mu. So again, well, you can kind of do um, a chain with the strong consonants uh, starting from the back. Uh, ni, ni. N, m, m. Now you can hear that each of those are at a different pitch, of course, because the shape of the mouth is different. So on the same, well, okay, well, of course, different shapes make different sounds, or what was it, different sizes uh, of resonating bodies of air um, produce different sounds. Okay, same story. A strong L at the start of a word, uh, y. Um, so for example, when this e becomes softened, uh, and this included North Clare. There's a difference of the buzzer difference between a uh, uh, leg as an order to one person leg read read leg um whereas as a reply to an answer did he read it uh leg leg l l l e e e um and it would seem that in Leinster actually it was the the strong forms of the consonants took over but I'll talk about that another time so n w again the um the square I'm using to represent uh, the lamin, the well, basically the, the front part of the tongue, um, not just the tip, but the lamina, the part behind the tip, all pushed together against the teeth, which is what I'm using the dental symbol for above the consonant. Normally, in the international phonetic alphabet, the dental symbol is uh, below, um, but I think it's clear to actually put it above because it it is against the upper teeth, not the lower teeth. Um, so again, let's let's go through it. English is in the middle of all these. E, e. L, L, U. Um, this in Ballymacoda, for anyone in East Cork, uh, became LL in the middle of words, became um, LD. I'll come back to talk about that. Uh, or, uh, no, I've put this letter in brackets because it has disappeared from uh, every single uh, dialect of, of Gaelic, Gaelic, Gaelic. Um, probably in Old Irish, it was a, a palatal a trill. A <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't a very good attempt at a trill. Um, which is similar to the Czech uh, or Hachek. Uh, but, so R, anytime you see R at the start of a word in Irish, it's actually broad. Um, now, what happened? This strong slender R uh, first became broad R, which is a rolled R, a trilled R like in Spanish, R, R. Um, actually, it's the exact same as Spanish. When you have... Um, or at the start of a word, or Castilian, I should say. When you have or at the start of a word, it's rolled, brr, and when it's double in the, in the middle of a word, uh, it's rolled. Brr. So like there's a difference in Spanish between um, perro, which means but, and perro, um, which means dog. Um, so that's that was the rolled or, traditionally. Uh, it's maintained, actually it was maintained in South Ross Common, uh, and I know a lot of people nowadays have taken it in their head, those that are interested in Leinster Irish have taken it in their head, that Leinster Irish was the same as Connacht Irish. It wasn't. Um, and there are quite a number of examples in South Ross Common um, and East Galway where we have this rolled out instead. So I would possibly, I, I, I don't stand too firmly on it yet, um, that R was actually maintained in uh, Leinster, certainly North Leinster, um, Ulster has quite conservative pronunciation, and it's where these the distinctions between these coronal sonnets are, are best maintained. Um, so anyway, uh, rrr, but what happened in most dialects, including most of Connacht and uh, practically all of Munster, including Kilkenny and Leash, Queen's County, um, is that the rrr just became a tapped rrr, uh, rrr, rrr, rrr. Um, slender r, j, 
j, j. Now notice the difference. Uh, this has a little line continuing up for, a, uh, for, for the rolled R, basically the normal R that you see, whereas the tapped R, so the single d, uh, r, 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 um, has is just a curve. There's no there's no line. Um, but what tends to happen with all these sounds uh, is that they tend to become, we'll say, English, er, uh, er, er, and in North America you get this uh, retroflex, er, er, er. So the word uh, rohr, uh, bicycle, even though the word bicycle is often used by native Irish speakers anyway, bicycle. Uh, so rohr, rohr, rohr uh, would tend to most people who learn their Irish in schools, um, if they have bad teachers. Um, and don't believe your teachers. Probably. <laughs> um, just because your teacher says, well, my teacher always says, rohr. Mm. Um, well, now you can teach your teacher. Politely, of course. Um, so, uh, rohr, 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 rather than rohr, rohr, rohr. Um, right. Sorry, I blazed through that. Um, let's go on to the dorsal consonants. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that then. So, uh, uh, Irish, uh, bra uh, sorry, slender first, two ways of writing it, C and the K with the plus underneath it to show, you can hear the difference in cookie, cookie, cookie. You can hear that the k is the tongue is further forward. Um, you'll often see it followed by the j, but that's not entirely correct because uh, that's going into the, the range of a coronal consonant. But uh, we'll come back to talk about that. Uh, so uh, an advanced k, as opposed to k. Um, sorry, and I should say as well, you often get people saying like quiva, uh, um, quina. Gwail ga with a wo wo wo. Uh, you don't get wo, so a w in Irish, uh, except after labial consonants, bilabial consonants. Uh, in um, otherwise, you get this vowel, this u uh, u uh, u, uh, like the u in Japanese. So it's u, uh, but the lips are flat or retracted. Um, so um, you have Irish and slender broad. Um, Whereas they tend to be, those differences tend to be ignored by English speakers and just becomes k. So again, you put English in the middle. Uh, k, 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 k. Um, ch, probably the most, ch and r are the sounds that are get um, most abused in English. Um, so slender and broad. Um, often just become English. K. So there's quite a difference between and well, you often uh, in some dialects ch, uh, in some dialects I should uh, Ulster and uh, Meath, Louth, of course. Um, this ch has become just a, a huh. so like the word for a beggar, they'd say baka, uh, baka, um, rather than bakach, bakach, the monster. Uh, right, same st story. Um, uh, gi 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 gi. This is just two ways of writing it. Um, I actually prefer this way, but anyway. Gi uh, gi gi and gu gu gu, which is different to gu gu gu. So again, let's put English in the middle. Piggy in the middle. Gi gu gu. Gi gu gu. I don't know if you. Oh, you can't see that. Uh, okay. Um, G H at the start of a word when sender, y, which is like an English y, except the tongue's raised higher to the palate, so there's actually more blockage of the air, causing friction. So y, uh, which tends, and then the broad version is uh, ro. So y, y, ro. But this, the broad uh, gh tends to get turned into English g. So like ga, uh, uh, can I think of anything? Like two doors. Um, ga, gorus, rather than uh, ra. Uh, it's a fricative. And then finally, uh, ng, which is a very difficult sound for English speakers because, of course, there's no word in English that begins with ng. Um, again, it has a broad and slender form. Ni, 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 and ngo, ngo, ngo. But English speakers tend to. Well, well, you'll notice that English speakers do make a difference, although they don't think about it, uh, unless they've studied phonetics. Um, in sing and song. Ng, ng. Um, which are more or less the Irish equivalents, except that English speakers don't think of it like that. So, um, well, anyway. Now, I did get through that. Fair play to me. 
Um, sorry, I know that was extraordinarily quick, and I'm sure we'll have loads of questions. Um, I hope I haven't left out anything. I probably have, but um, I'll make another video anyway, a better one, as always. Okay, stand on.